Hello, I've gotten so many questions about Helicon Remote, and that's what this video is about. We're going to discuss the basics of Helicon Remote. So you're here because you either purchased Helicon Remote or have seen that in Helicon Focus. And I've done two videos. You can check them out here if you're interested on how to focus stack your images. And basically these programs will help you take several images and put them together to make a beautiful in focused picture. And the reason why we need this type of software is because at this moment that I'm filming this video, our cameras cannot handle a variety of focus areas in the frame. So even in landscape, I've used stacked images to get my foreground, middle ground, and background all in one focused image. But with that saying, Helicon Remote is really awesome when you use it indoors. That's what I do. I use it on my computer. You can use it on your laptop and you hook it up to your camera so you can take pictures and then merge them all together. Android phones has an app for Helicon Remote so you could take it outdoors, which is really cool. Okay, so before we start, go to the website here and download your free Helicon Remote for 30 days to try it out. We're in Helicon Remote, woohoo! This is the fun part, but we gotta learn everything first before we really start to focus stack and use this remote to get us a beautiful picture, okay you guys? So let me just share with you this. So real quick over here to the right, you can see that my camera is plugged in. This shows me my batteries. It shows that I'm on the exposure mode of manual. It shows that my time is two seconds. I am at aperture eight, and you can see that the ISO is 100. And look, as I'm going, you can see that it's like giving you prompts, which is really cool. Now, I don't have anything here. Um, if I had it on aperture priority, then you could change your exposure that's what evaluated ev means um, for my canon but i'm on manual so i like to work with manual you may not i do recommend that you shoot raw yes it's bigger but this way you could process your images if you don't know how to process i'll show you how i've got tons of videos on post processing with lightroom on one and photoshop let's go to the left so here you could see the toggle area so let me just push this toggle area and that is showing me it's live i'm going to move it right now so as you can tell that was live right i was moving things around just so you know that yes see this side here and this side here as we stack we're going to lose some of our composition so give yourself some extra room i want to explain your preferences you really should go in the preferences and start paying attention to everything in here as you learn you may come back to this area learn your shortcut keys are awesome they're all here also you can use a stack shot so the stack shot works really good here you can set this up of course if you screw something up don't worry about it because you could restore your defaults no problem this is self-explanatory if you have questions please please make sure you ask down below i check my comments all the time Okay, so let's go ahead and preview. And you could see histogram is showing me what it's seen, right? One thing that's nice is being a Canon user is I can use this depth of field. And once I do that, you could see that I've got this little area right in here in focus. That's the closest part to the lens. And I will explain that a little bit more in a bit because we're going to use this area where it says focus bracketing 
this is really cool. And also over here, you can see that this right here, when you click on that, this blue is called focus peaking. And basically what that means is that it is telling me that this is in focus. I'll explain even more in a little bit. And just to say this doesn't work for you, then let's just take it off, okay? And just say you're seeing this and you kind of, you've looked in your camera, you know this is kind of in focus, but you're not sure. So over here to the left, you've got preview. And if you click down on the arrow, you can see there's a fast preview and there is a regular preview. The fast preview just shoots a real quick JPEG. We'll do that really fast. And there it's showing me that that is in focus right there, right? Another thing that you could do too, if you click the preview, now I'm on a Mac, so whatever software you have as default, it's going to open up in that actual software program. I don't really use it very often because I do it for my full stacks. And then in Helicon Focus, I will then go into my software, but I'm just letting you know you have that. Now over here, you can see barely it says autofocus and it's not highlighted. That's because on my lens, I have it on manual focus. So I'm gonna get up right now and change it to have the lens set to focus. On the side of the lens, you can change it and remove it out of manual. Now I have the lens itself in autofocus. And the reason why you want that is because you want Helicon Remote to be able to take charge of your focusing. Self-explanatory, you wanna take a picture, you could do that. The start shooting, I will show you this in a second. And then the same with time lapse and Helicon Focus, I'll show you that as we use it. The next step that I wanna share with you is now we're gonna use the A and the B. This is the closest part to my lens. And I manually adjusted this, but sometimes it's hard for me to um, adjust and make it perfect. So what I'll do is I'll click on this autofocus and you can see autofocus and AF and shoot. I just like to go to autofocus. I don't wanna shoot right now at the second. And I'm just gonna click there Let's just say this was it. And see how, what it does, it's really cool. It actually shows you and you'll adjust, get up close, and then see these little arrows in here? You can adjust these arrows. This is small increments. This is large increments. This is very, I'm going back and forth. And here is even more increments. And you can see how it's, see how it's really moved it. <laughs> Oops. Well, there we go, that's the tip. So we know that's in focus because we could see it. So what we're gonna do, A is the closest part. You can see nearest point basically to your lens. That's what, that's what it's saying. So we're gonna lock it. Now you can see there's a lock right there. Right here's a lock. And now we're gonna go to the farthest area of the composition. So let me go back so I can get the full view. I'm just clicking. So let's go over here and you can see it's moving. This is where you decide how many stacks you want. How much do you want in focus? A lot of times I pretty much do the whole stack in focus. And then in post-processing, what I'll do is for artistic reasons, maybe change what's in focus later on. Since I'm actually doing the stack, I might as well get most of it in focus, right? That's why we're doing all this work. And a lot of times I'll even go too far. Let's see. See, look, even this is farther away. Do I want this? Uh, maybe this point. Let's start going just a little bit now. Once I get the big chunk, you can see the details. 
and let me click see there's a negative so I'll just click on it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lock the B okay now you see that it's locked right here it's locked All right let me go back to this okay now I have already did a test shot with my exposure but let's see if it's okay I still have them locked I'm not doing anything let's just make sure that my exposure is okay maybe the light has changed if I'm doing natural light so let's just check it out and we're gonna do a quick take a picture and I just clicked on it so I'm just making sure that it's it's not real dark and it's not blown out in my yellow so once you click on it you'll be okay and then you just click the X to get out of it see we're gonna do a test right now and see if this if I change my battery do I lose this and if so I'll let you know okay so we're back I want you to know that look I've lost my information so I have to start this all over so this is a great tip uh, if you are starting this make sure your batteries are fully charged you know what I wanted to tell you is it hasn't changed the actual what I've done before with you know we ended with the farthest away so I went ahead and locked the farthest away and now I will go ahead because I already had this right I already did all that work so it doesn't matter if you start with the farthest away or the closest. It's usually easier to start with the closest. So now we'll just go ahead and get to the close area. So the auto depth of field, if you have that clicked, it already works with your information, your ISO, your aperture. It, it knows everything that's hooked up to the camera. When you're first starting off, just use one lens. Don't make things complicated for yourself and add a bunch of, you know, like bellows and extension tubes and all that. Just get to know the program first before you start, okay? I'm gonna do exposure bracketing in a different video and some advanced settings in another video for you also. You can see that I have it on daylight. You can change these if you want say if you are in an area that has fluorescent and you can change it if you want to for now we'll just go ahead and use daylight that's what i'm in at the moment we will work on the burst shooting on another video so now that we're all set that we have it ready to go now we're going to do the start shooting and i'll go ahead and click on that turns off my live view and it's going to start shooting. Now, as this is working, I want you to know that obviously your camera's on a tripod, everything's ready to go. Please do not move around in the area that you're photographing. You would be so surprised if I start stomping around, it's going to shake my camera. And that can be really frustrating because it will make things blurry. If you want to push that button and then head out of the room, it's probably the best thing. Or if you're just going to hang out and uh, work on your desk, then so be it. But as you can see, I have 56 of these shots. So I will go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's done shooting. So let me know down in the comments what would you like to know when it comes to focus stacking? And I just may make a video for you. So now you could see that the 61 images have been saved to my pictures and a watch folder that I told it to go to. Would you like to view the images in Helicon Focus? See how it tells me to go to Helicon Focus. I'm gonna say yes. That's what's so cool about this. Okay, so before we stack our images, if you would like to not waste your money on macro photography equipment, download our essential macro photography toolkit. To get your hands on my top macro photography creation resources to make your next image spectacular so you can create work faster without the guesswork. 
We're gonna go ahead and stack these for fun, right? I want you to see how it works. We'll render. And here you could see the before and after. So you can hold it. Yeah, it's in the it's in focus. And that's how easy it is. Awesome, huh? Look at that. I'll process this and let you know how it looks. If you subscribe to the channel, then you'll see more videos coming out on Helicon Remote and more advanced techniques. But this video will get you started. And if you're still having maybe a little bit of frustrations with Helicon Remote or focus stacking, check out the video down below because that will help you with focus stacking so you make sure that you get a really good stack to merge together.